Hey everybody, Z1 here. Um, today I will be teaching you how to create a, a graphical user interface in Java. Uh, there are several things that you should know. There are uh, IDEs that help you. Um, it's not an exact science yet for me. I don't know exactly the placement and whatnot, but I know the basics. So you're going to need to import three things. Okay, create your class. And uh, with the class, uh, type extends JFrame. <coughs> this will allow us to use this class as a JFrame. And then make a new variable private static final long serial version UID equals one. L. Then create a uh, constructor here. <coughs> and uh, create the main class and then inside of this class create another class uh, let's name it button clicked implements action listener and then public void action performed action event or zero okay so we're gonna create a form here <coughs> so we need some variables public j button okay button equals new j button then cancel button equals new j button cancel and then a new j label public j label j label one equals new j label public j text field j text no wait equals new j text field and let's say 50 no wait we'll just put it in this so the important thing another important thing is there's different types of text areas or text fields or whatever you want to call them um, there's the text field which is like uh, what you see on Google the username and uh, password field and whatnot and then there's text area which is what I'm typing in right now 
uh, text field is one line and uh, text area is several and then there's a whole bunch of different ones <coughs> but these are the two most common that I use okay so we're gonna need to uh, in our main method create a new instance of this class equals new GUI and uh, then we create or not create sorry um, perform a method set default close operation uh, without this your program will not close or any of that okay so then we need to do GUI dot set resizable uh, you can just set it true or false I'm going to set it to false <coughs> and then GUI dot set size we don't necessarily need this and I'm just gonna set it to 260 by 260 nice square form okay then a uh, GUI dot set title GUI dot set visible this is also important <coughs> the form won't show itself unless you do that then uh, in the thing here in this constructor the constructor yeah uh, type uh, set layout new flow layout no parameters Okay, and then type uh, button clicked a equals new button clicked <coughs> then uh, OK button dot add action listener a cancel button dot add action listener a add j label one add text add OK button add cancel button <coughs> then point P equals new point toolkit dot get default toolkit dot get screen size dot width minus or divided by two <coughs> minus one thirty and toolkit dot get default toolkit dot get screen size dot height divided by 2 minus 130 so you see what we're doing here we're taking a we're taking the toolkit to get the screen size the height of the screen rather uh, dividing it by 2 to get the absolute center and then subtracting 130 to which is actually half of the size of our form here and uh, setting the 
we're going to be setting the location of the form which uh, by the way the location counts as the upper left so that's why we're taking it and minusing 130 to get the center of the form in the center not the origin so set location uh, P So j label one dot set text type your name in the text field. Okay, and then a uh, text dot set columns. We'll say fifteen no uh, twenty. Okay, so now that we have everything set up appropriately, we can configure our action listener here. So the reason we have this here is because it's actually required to use it because it implements action listener. So uh, here's another thing we can do. So we can take arg0.get source that gets the source of it and if the source is equal to oh okay I forgot something GUI GUI equals new GUI if <coughs> arc0 dot get source equals GUI dot OK button else if arg zero dot get source e equals GUI dot cancel button And then set the text <coughs> there we go so if we open the control panel here Um, okay, so let's go over to the desktop here. Oh, okay, forgot something. Or I typed something wrong. Okay, so of course I typed a little bit of things wrong, but <coughs> I think this is the last of them. If it is, then we should see some classes generated. Yippee. So we can type Java UI and run it. <laughs> And we will see if I sized it appropriately. Okay. 
Okay, so I can I can uh, narrow it or make it a bit shorter. So let's say fifty. Okay, needs to be a bit bigger. <coughs> so, yeah, it's kind of a trial and error here. And let's say 150. Okay, so the buttons don't really work right now, so I'm going to make sure they do. Okay, so I'm going to copy this. Okay, so we don't quite, what's wrong? Let's change this to E. There we go. Okay, so it's gonna start running. And then I'm gonna click OK. But uh, this text doesn't really change. Okay, I'm sorry, there's a bit of uh, bugging, or debugging you have to do, always, whenever you're programming, but it shouldn't be that difficult.
there. So that's how you do it, but uh, there's actually a slightly easy using NetBeans. So I will be right back. All right, sorry, NetBeans is being a bit slow. So I'm just going to let you experiment with it on your own. Uh, it's really easy. You can get it uh, Oracle website. You can get it at the Oracle website. Uh, as well as JDK, JRE, and whatnot. Uh, run it, create a new project, create a new file, a Swing GUI form, uh, JFrame form, and then you can just drag and drop objects. So it auto generates the code for you.